I'm getting pulled over. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, so this Golf R has got to be one of my favorite cars that we've rebuilt, modified, and just an everyday car. It's literally perfect. It is one of those cars which is quick, but also does good master gallon. It's quite cheap to run. It's got five doors, it's got plenty of room, and it looks nice as well. It actually looks sick, but it's also sort of inconspicuous at the same time. Now, although I have bought a new rebuild project for the channel, obviously the BMW M4, if you've not saw that video, click in the top right corner. We are far from finished with this one, but already it's so satisfying to see that the golf went from this, to this. Now, if you've been watching the build on the Golf, you'll know that now it's gone from the priority being rebuilding it and fixing it to now making it as quick as possible. But we still have the odd problem here and there from the crash. So front assist and cruise control is still not available. And that is because there's a radar behind this badge which I replaced, which now needs to be calibrated for it to work. Now Volkswagen wanted a lot of money for this to be calibrated and for it to work, but I've since found that there's a few people out there which will do it for like 150 quid. So we'll definitely get that done. And also the headlights aren't really working how they should as well. This is dip beam right now, but when you've got dip beam on, this one is supposed to be on as well, and that one only comes on when full beam's on. So again, something that probably could be solved with coding. But this is all irrelevant because in this video, we're not doing any fixes, we're doing <laughs> more modifications. And we're about to fix this issue. It sounds like a tin can. <laughs> And that is because we fitted a three inch downpipe, but we've still got the stock exhaust on. So we've got all that air going out and then it's still being restricted by that stock exhaust. Do you know what does sound good though? The induction kit. Listen to this, hopefully you can hear it. <laughs> okay, so before we head inside the unit, we've got a little mod and being it's nice weather, we might as well crack on with this outside. Okay, this modification is not one that everyone likes, but which one of my modifications are? <laughs> I do this on pretty much all of my hatchbacks, and that is removing the rear wiper. I don't use it at all, and I think it looks a lot flusher and cleaner without the wiper. Here's the wiper delete kit here, and the actual bung is pretty much like glass, so you wouldn't even notice that it was there in the first place. Came from the coat, used to rest on the floor. I stitch up my wounds, was born a soldier. Flipping the struggle, I'm taking it worldwide. Hold it down when you talk to me. Say it is what it's supposed to be. Say it loud, but I mean it too, yeah. Talk that good when you talk to me. I think that's a nice modification. It looks good, and it was easy to do. And do you know what else looks good, and is easy to do? A website built using Squarespace. <laughs> From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. It's never a bad day when you have to move a Maserati Liberty Walk out of a unit to get your goal far in. And it's never a bad day when you have to use Squarespace to build a website. You see, Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to be able to build a professional looking website from home. <laughs> You see, when some people think about starting a website, they don't even know where to begin. But with Squarespace, it's so easy because there's loads of templates to choose from. Just look at them all. I'm gonna start with this one. You can use the template as your base, then you can just drag and drop your logos in there, drag and drop your photos in there. You can change the text to whatever you like, show off new products. You see, Squarespace literally does have it all. Look on the left-hand side. You've got marketing tools like email campaigns, and you've also got analytics as well to view who's on your website at what time. So when you need a website, go to squarespace.com or click the link in the description box below and use code Matt Armstrong when you're ready to launch your website and you're gonna get yourself 10% off your first website or domain name. Okay, so we've got a Scorpion catback exhaust. I've got a Scorpion downpipe, so I thought 
I might as well get the rest of the system. So on this Scorpion as well, it says no valve. So I can't open and close it for like quieter sound or a louder sound. Whereas on the standard one there is, but I've cheaped out and I've got the cheaper one because I've got to fix that. <laughs> and can we all take a moment and pray that the BMW M4 engine <laughs> is okay. Now I'll start work on this soon, but the thing is, as soon as it goes in the ramp, it's not coming off until it's fixed really. So that's my sort of issue. And also I need an engine support bar thing, which holds the engine up whilst I drop the subframe down. So I need to get one of them before we even start work to that. But I really want to say a massive thank you for all your guys' support on this, whether that's clicking the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up button, or buying some of the latest hard work Beats Talent merchandise, which the link is in the description. Right, enough of that. Let's get the gold fish. Okay, so here we go again. This is what we're replacing the cat back. So the old rusty part of the exhaust. We've obviously already done the down part. This is a resonator, which is restricting a lot of the power and sound. And then this is the bat box as well. All of this will be coming off. First, we're disconnecting this sort of brace, and then we're disconnecting the electrical connections to the valves on the back as the new exhaust doesn't have them. The rest is sort of self explanatory. There's only sort of one clamp connecting it to the down pipe. I had to call help to lower the exhaust because it is pretty heavy. And finally, it's off. And here you can see the old restrictive system. You see those electrical connections on the top? They're the valves. Now, it'd be a YouTube crime if I didn't start the car with no exhaust on, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's do it. Awful. <laughs> Let's get the Scorpion one on. Okay, same thing, but in reverse. This time it's a little bit easier because the Scorpion exhaust comes in sections. So we've got a section to add on to the downpipe. And then another small section here, which goes finally into the back box after this. I've got to remove the exhaust mounts off the standard back box and then put them onto the Scorpion back box. What a knob. Finally, the back box goes into place. Then the elbows which sort of lead onto the exhaust tips which took me ages to try and line up. Okay, exhaust is on. It took me ages to try and line the tips up and still, well, they're not 100% yet but I'm going to drive it, get it heated up a bit and then come back and then try and get them well, how this should be. Phil's gonna do the honors of turning the car on for the first time. Let's see. <laughs> I'm expecting I'm expecting to be loud, okay? Send it. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, it is loud. So now everything's on. Intercooler, induction kit, downpipe, exhaust, intake. Intake ready for Phil to do stage two. I haven't even done the box yet, have I? No, gearbox tuner as well. But we're not gonna stage two just yet. We need to take this out on the road and see what it sounds like under load. Okay, we've came to the conclusion. It needs bigger tips. Yeah, yeah, look, it, fa it fails the, uh, the car full fist can't. test. If you can't put your fist in the exhaust, it's failed Fail. the test. Let me just test the Maserati. Yes, look, that's what we're talking about. It definitely needs new tips. I think some bigger tips. So Scorpion, if you're watching this, we need some big tips. <laughs> okay, so before we take it out for a drive, we've got the original place where we tested this first exhaust. So here's before. And here's after. You know what? I like it. I do like it. I mean, it's never going to be a V8 or it's never going to be a V10. It is just little four-pot turbo engine, so it's not going to sound incredible. But but let's see what it sounds like under load. I'm expecting some some bangs. 
Oh my god, it is so much louder in the car already. That is loud, then. It is so loud in the car. I think that's going to drone next. There's a noticeable difference in the car already. <laughs> it is so loud in here. That is loud. I bet, I bet you. Like, it's going to drone yeah. like an absolute... is now incredibly loud the whole reason we're doing this whole thing is to try and beat the Lamborghini M we need to go to stage two and that's well that's gonna happen in the next video <laughs> the funny thing is I started this video saying I like this car because it's sort of inconspicuous you can drive it anywhere but now it is so noisy <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of the Golf R's new sound. It is really difficult to put it across on camera, but it is going to hopefully increase the performance. And we'll find out on the next video where we get it on the dyno and Phil is going to be stage two tuning it. Then we're heading to the racetrack. Again, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Click that subscribe button if you did, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.